Hey, thanks for coming back. Uh, this video uh, I've been thinking about for a while, especially since I finally uh, convinced our police department, not the shirt, police department, to conduct a, a, a seminar uh, around the subject of law enforcement and the armed citizen in our city. Uh, I'm fortunate to live in a state that has permitless carry, not constitutional carry, that's a little different. But as long as you're a resident of the state, uh, you can, if you're legal to purchase a firearm, you can carry it any way you want. Uh, you are still restricted uh, to a few places where you cannot carry. Uh, we can carry on public university campuses uh, with some exceptions. So it is a very Second Amendment friendly state now, having said that, there are not so friendly Second Amendment people who live here, and you guessed it, they're primarily in, in a couple of the largest cities. Uh, and it puts, uh, it puts law enforcement in an, in an interesting position. So, the, my thoughts here are not trying to, to be a, an internet lawyer or a YouTube lawyer. Uh, I train a lot and I train with law enforcement people, both retired and some active. Uh, some of them are my trainers, some of them just participate in the class. And uh, I haven't met an asshole yet, if you know what I'm saying. Some have, have come from uh, anti-Second Amendment jurisdictions uh, and, and they're, they're making a mental transition. Okay. So, first, I, I want to I want to take the position I want to emphasize em, em, empathize with uh, the law enforcement officers, whether they're police or sheriff. Um, and and this is some from some conversation. Um, two of the most dangerous encounters that they will be called to believe it or not, is a traffic stop and a domestic violence encounter. Um, they happen to be some of the most dangerous environments. Sometimes these men and women are by themselves. Uh, now they're trained how to do certain things, but humans are humans. Um, when they get out of the, if it's a traffic stop, when they get out of the car, um, to say that they weren't apprehensive would, would be disingenuous. My point of view is, okay, I'm going to understand that this officer who's approaching my vehicle from whatever side is apprehensive. My job is not to add to that. My job is to help them feel comfortable that I'm not going to be a threat to them. Um, I can still carry everywhere. Now regardless of my state's law, what I do is the following, and this is a traffic stop. As soon as I'm pulled over, and this doesn't happen a lot, but it's happened twice, uh, and uh, one re resulted in a ticket, the other did not. But as soon as I see the blinky blinky, I retrieve my wallet that has, and, and then out of there the driver's license and my concealed carry permit. Those two, now, even though it is a permitless state now, I still do that, right? And then I have license registration, you know, insurance and all that. So I have that because I keep those above the visor. Why? Because I don't want them to see me I want them to continue to see my hands, right? So they see what I'm doing, they see I'm holding this, right? And when they come to the window, if it's on the driver's side, I'm going to hand them stuff through the driver's side. If they come to the non-driver's side, the passenger side, I'm going to hold the documents attendant to, and I'm going to uh, wait for him to get, or her to give me some instructions. Usually they will say, you know, driver's license and registration. And then I will reach over and hand them the driver's license and concealed carry permit first. 
I'll let them look at that. Now, the response is almost always, oh, two things have happened. They know I don't have to tell them that. So I've already def defused uh, some anxiety and increased a bit of trust uh, with them. The second thing he's going to say or she's going to say is, uh, are you armed now? And my answer is always going to be yes. And they're going to say, where is the firearm? And, or, and I'm going to say, right there. And it's in a holster next to my thigh, pretty much in plain view in, in my vehicle. And, right, and they always say, right, and, and when I talk to, and when I talk to some of the law enforcement folks, they will say the same thing. That's pretty good. I said, so what are you thinking if I do that? He said, I, I, I relax, right? I said, good, because that's what I want you to do, right? You know where my gun is, you know where my hands are, and we agree, and, so, and, and, and I've said this, I said, you know, and I'm smiling, right, because there's no reason to be a dick, right? And I'll say, okay, can we agree uh, if I don't touch mine, you won't touch yours? And they always go, that sounds fair or something the, to the equivalent. So the, the encounter, even though, I mean, I might be pissed or upset that I might be getting a ticket, but that's not the point. The point is, is I don't want that officer to be unnecessarily apprehensive because one, it's a traffic stop, two, now they're dealing with an armed citizen. Uh, so that helps diffuse the traffic stop part. Now, I've never been asked to get out of the car, but let's say that for whatever reason, they, they or the person wants me to, to exit the vehicle, right? I'm gonna go, okay. I'm gonna leave my hands where they are, I'm gonna open the door, and I'm gonna get out, right? Now, uh, they're gonna say, leave the firearm where it is. And I'm going, sure, okay, no sense in, I don't need it. And then we finish whatever their conversation is. So that's the traffic stop part. Um, if, you know, if some silliness goes on where, you know, the, you know I, I'm, if, if you want me to get out of the car, I'll get out of the car, right? I mean, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, if he says something stupid like, I smell marijuana, I'm not going to get my buns in an uproar and go, no, you don't, right? And I go, well, that's interesting. I don't know where it's coming from, or whatever, right? If I end up not liking that, I have a right as a citizen to file a complaint with the, uh, with the chief, which I have no problem in doing since I know the chief personally, right? Not that we're friends, I just happen to know who, who he is. So I have no problem in doing that. Now, let's talk about another scenario. I won't get into a domestic because there's you pretty much know bad stuff is going on. And in a lot of those cases today, the law enforcement person is ambushed. And almost all of the uh, law enforcement deaths so far have been uh, the result of in, in, intent to ambush. I want, to, I want cops to come so I can put rounds on them. Uh, so let's talk about the incident where the, 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 and it's usually police rather than sheriff, but the law enforcement person is really kind of in a bind. And that's the man with a gun call. So for all calls other than a traffic stop, um, the law enforcement person is dispatched to an encounter of some type. Uh, a man with a gun call is usually some other citizen has seen a person with a gun and is, whatever their motivation is, they're, they're making a 911 call and saying, you know, I see a person with a gun and I'm nervous, I'm around my kids, whatever the story they tell. But who are they talking to? They're talking to dispatch. Now, I'm fortunate to live in a place where the dispatchers are very well trained. Why? Because there's a hundred thousand concealed carry people running around uh, in this place. And so, you know, 
So there's a triage set of questions. Uh, what is the person doing? Is the fireman holster? You know, whatever. And if it ends up not being a threat, then they politely tell the citizen, well, this, you know, understand that is their right. And as long as they're not doing anything, uh, you know, to harm anyone or themselves, uh, they have a right to do that. And they don't dispatch. Now, where I live, there are some transplants from other uh, anti-gun areas in the country. And they will misrepresent the case, the, s the situation, and say, uh, well, you know, my, my child, I'm, I, you know, I'm not in a safe place, I'm worried, and, you know, they're, they're looking like they're going to do something, and the, I, I, the gun is out of the holster, and he's waving it and pointing at people. And, 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 and citizens who don't like guns will say that. Now, the dispatcher is in a real tough place uh, because now they've been told, mail the gun, threatening people, I, got, I have to send uh, some officers there. And all the officers are going to know is what? Man with a gun, threatening people, da da. And so they're going to be amped up. If you're the person who someone has made the call on, regardless of where you are, uh, that can be very dangerous. And because the officers can only act on what they have been told. Now, uh, they, they will approach. Uh, if you don't have a firearm in your hand and you're the only, I mean, and you meet the description of whoever, you know, the caller says, uh, they're going to they're gonna make contact with you and, you know, they're going to ask for ID. Don't go through that. I don't have to tell you. I mean, that's just, there's no reason for that other than to be a dick, you know? I mean, just tell them who you are. Just tell them who you are. And uh, just don't touch your gun. Okay? Don't even look like you're going to touch your gun. You don't have to put your hands up. I mean, you can fold your arms. You can do something else, but don't have your hands down where your firearm is. And, and usually there's going to be the, the person contacting you, and they're going to have a wingman who's standing pr with his hand pretty close to his gun, if not on it. And uh, there might be somebody with a shotgun or somebody with an AR role, right? Why? Because they've been told there's an armed person threatening people. You, you see, uh, you fit the description, right? But you're not, you haven't done that. And so they're going to talk to you. And, you know, if you say, I, you know, I, I live here, you know. I haven't been threatening anybody. They're going to get that. They're going to get that. And um, then, I mean, th then they got to go back to the cop shop and fill out a stupid report that they didn't want to do anyway. You see how, you see what I'm saying? I mean, there's no, there, there, there's no reason to to increase the anxiety on their part, right? Now, sometimes, and these are un, not very well-trained officers who might do this, they might say, um, uh, hand me your gun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Never touch your firearm, period, in the presence of law enforcement. Never. I don't care what they tell you. That, that's one you don't comply with. And you can do it with a smile. You can say, excuse me, but I don't, I don't, I'm not going to do that. I am not touching my firearm in your presence, especially with your wingman here. Because I don't want there to be any misinterpretation of what I'm going to do. Now, uh, you're more than welcome to take my firearm and make it safe, whatever you want to do, because it's around in the chamber. You're more than welcome to do that. Just give it back to me when we're done. Uh, and, you know, 
they'll go, oh shit, I, I, you know, I totally get it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, this is a, a normal conversation. Nobody's trying to be an asshole, but they have a job to do, right? And in that particular case, they, did, they, they, they know or they really have a good sense that it's some anti-gun person that sick them on you, right? So just, just don't make their situation any worse and yours won't be any worse. Because at the end of the day, you really do have to comply with their lawful instructions, right? And even if you don't think it's lawful, um, you know, comply anyway, right? And um, you'd be amazed at how, how far just common courtesy goes. And I know there's folks that say, well, if you're caring while black or caring while brown or caring while being non-white, that could change. In some places, that's true. That's true. Um, I, I, I don't know what to do about that today other than to continue having dialogue with law enforcement. Uh, but, you know, the, the guidance I just said would, would probably work for anyone. And I, you know, so that's why I'll, I'll leave with you. Now, it has nothing to do with the laws of your state. It has to do with common courtesy and understanding that um, it's in everybody's best interest to, to not increase the anxiety level of an officer who's approaching you, right? And they certainly don't want to do that. Now, are there asshole cops? Yes. Is there anything you can do about that? Not really. You can, you can file a complaint after the encounter, right? Now, uh, if, if any of you are law enforcement officers on active, you know, active duty, or you have been, I would offer this as some, uh, as some thinking for you guys and ladies. Uh, if, if someone has volunteered information to let you know who they are, that they're caring, and that they're not a threat to you, trying to reduce your anxiety level, um, you know, I mean, you got a gun, they got a gun. Why not, why not say, hey, what are you carrying, man? You know? Glock, piece of shit. Yeah, well, you know what I'm saying. I mean, there is a, there is a level of, of uh, banter that is, is professional on, on, on the officer's part. And it also, it also communicates that you're not, you're, you are not afraid of this person, right? Now, regardless of whether or not you're gonna write him a ticket, you see what I'm saying? I mean, regardless if you have to have put handcuffs on them for some reason, you know? Uh, but just to acknowledge, to acknowledge that you appreciate um, the effort that the armed citizen has uh, has put forward to, to to not to not increase your anxiety level in a situation I think is useful in a lot of ways so those are my thoughts um, I'll do a follow-up after the seminar in November and we'll see we'll see how close I got because I have no no clue on what what they're gonna do so uh, as always Put your comments down below. Thanks for watching. Carry on.